Till now, we have completed two chapters in this course of Computer Organization and Architecture and the two chapters are Introduction to COA and Memory Interfacing and Hierarchy. Now, we are going to start our third chapter which is Number System. Although we have discussed number system in the course of Digital Electronics, here we are going to reintroduce the topic keeping the aspects of computer organization and architecture in mind. So I hope you all will enjoy the lectures and have a happy learning. Now passing the mic to the instructor of this course. Hello everyone and welcome back. In this session and in the subsequent ones, we will be introduced to various number systems. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today we will first observe the unary number system, thereafter we will be introduced to our very familiar decimal number system. Let's head back to the Stone Age. This is George. He is a straight up guy. He goes hunting. He takes care of the herd that he owns. Basically, he is a provider. Now, the major problem that George faces all the time is every time his cattle return after grazing, he feels the number of the animals that he owns has either increased or decreased. Well, the days when he feels it has increased, he feels good naturally, but on the other days, he gets anxious. Basically, he is facing a problem in keeping track of his animals. Well, that was a concerning problem in Stone Age. Nonetheless, George here is not a quitter. He is a solutionist. So, George comes up with a solution. Since it's Stone Age, George understands there is an abundance of stones. So, for every animal, he keeps a stone in place. So, one animal signifies one stone. For two, there are two stones. For three, there are three and so on. So, what George did in here, with his primitive brain, he invented the unary number system. Let me explain. Since our brains are advanced than George's, we will understand this in a proper fashion. So, what we will do? We will use the symbol zero instead of the stone. So, for one item, we will assign a single zero. For two items, two zeros will be assigned. For three items, three zeros. For four items, four zeros, and so on. Basically, the number of zeros will be as many as the items are there. So, specifically for this, we are using the symbol zero, and the number of symbols in this number system is one. Now, the number of symbols in a particular number system is called the base of that number system. And since it's one in this case, that's the reason why this number system is called the unary number system. Coming to the general representation, three items will be specified by three zeros. Well, in fact, n number of items will be specified by n number of zeros. Additionally, we will append the base of the number system that is one in this case as a subscript to the representation. Because in other number systems, this may mean something else. So, in order to ascertain the significance, this subscript is needed. So, this is all about the emergence, the logic and the representation of unary number system. Now, let's move on to the next part. Well, unary number system was popular in early days of humankind. As our brain started to develop, we noticed that we have five fingers in each hand. So, ten fingers in total. We could use it for counting, right? So, after a lot of research, debates, inventions, discoveries, we assigned some symbols to each of the fingers. The symbol 0 is assigned to one finger, then the symbol 1 to another one, then the symbol 2 to another one, and then the symbol 3, then the symbol 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Basically, each finger specifies a different symbol. So, the symbols that we are using are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And the number of symbols is 10. Now, we already know the number of symbols used in a number system is called the base of it, right? And since the base is 10, this number system is called the decimal number system. Now, let's observe 
how do we count in this number system? So, what happens in here? Once we have used all the symbols 0, 1, 2, 3 till 9, for the next number, we will choose the second symbol that is 1, and alongside 1, we will use all the same symbols from 0 to 9 in order to form the next numbers. So, after 9, we have got the numbers 10, 11, 12 till 19. Now, after 19, in place of 1, we will choose the next symbol in line that is 2 and perform the same drill that we performed with 1. Now, all these places where the symbols are changing with the next number every time, we call them the units place. And the places where the symbols are changing after 10 instances, we call them the tens place. Notice this, once we have used up all the symbols in units place, we introduce the tens place. Then again, for a specific symbol in tens place, once all the symbols in the units place are exhausted, we introduce a new symbol for it. So, eventually, when for the tens place we have the symbol 9, and for 9, we have used up all the symbols in units place in order to form the next number, we will introduce the new place that is the hundreds place. Now, why so? Observe, we have exhausted both the units and the tens place with all the symbols we had. So, after 99, in order to form the next number, we will again choose the second symbol that is 1, and along with that, we will reset the tens and units place back to zeros. So, this is pretty much how the decimal number system works. Now, let's study a bit more about these places, shall we? Now, these places, units, tens, hundreds, thousands and so on, these have their own place values. Units place is basically 1 or 10 raised to the power 0. Well, anything raised to the power 0 is actually 1. This means, the symbols of this place will be changing after every unit. Now, after the symbol in units place has changed 10 times, we get to change the symbol in tens place, which naturally acquires the place value 10 or 10 raised to the power 1. Basically, 10 raised to the power 0 is 1, and multiplying 10 with that, we are getting 10. That's it. Now, after the symbol of tens place gets changed 10 times, we get to change the symbol in hundreds place, which has the place value 10 squared or 100. Now, why is so? Think about it. Together, the symbols of tens and units place will have to be changed 100 times so that we can change the symbol of hundreds place. Similarly, after the symbol of hundreds place gets changed 10 more times, we will get to change the symbol in thousands place, which naturally acquires the place value 10 cubed or 1000. So, basically, each of these places are 10 times than their previous ones, and their place values are 10 raised to the power 0, 10 raised to the power 1, 10 squared, 10 cubed, and so on. Well, with the help of an example, I can also prove it to you. Consider this number 785. We will find out its magnitude in decimal. Now, 7 is at hundreds place, so its magnitude can be obtained by multiplying its place value with itself. That is, 7 into 10 squared. Now, 8 is at tens place, right? So, its magnitude is 8 into 10 raised to the power 1. Finally, 5 is at units place. So, clearly, its magnitude can be obtained from 5 into 10 raised to the power 0 because that's what its place value is. So, we have got 7 into 100 plus 8 into 10 plus 5 into 1. So, 700 plus 80 plus 5. So, the decimal value is 785. Well, since it is in decimal and the base of the decimal number system is 10, we will write it like this. Now, coming to the general representation, consider a 5 digit decimal number. Now, in all these places, any symbol from 0 to 9 can be placed. Now, being a decimal number, it will have the base as 10. And therefore, the place values will be 10 raised to the power 0, 10 raised to the power 1, 10 squared, 10 cubed, till 10 raised to the power 4. 
because although it's a five digit number, the place value of the least significant digit began from 10 raised to the power zero. So for the most significant digit, the place value will have one less in the exponent than the place's number. So this is all about the decimal number system. So in this session, we learnt about the derivation, the logic and the representations of unary and decimal number systems. Alright people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we will observe another number system. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.